I am from Weidmüller. It's a, <clears throat> a company for producing a lot of stuff regarding connectivity, also from, from a communication perspective, but also for um, electronic devices and, and things like that. And we are also producing tools. We are producing printers and, and stuff like that. So we are on, on some perspective a supplier of industry 4.0, also offering solutions like uh, in industrial analytics, taking a look at uh, machine data and what we can learn from that. And on the other side, we are also an operator of Industry 4.0 because we have manifold factories all over the world. And that's the perspective where I want to talk about today <clears throat> because uh, we are working at the factory IT, so trying to optimize the IT systems in, in our factories uh, all over the world. When we take a look at our productions, and here you have an image of actually of one of our factories, um, a top level view, is that we want to increase the efficiency and also the availability of our products, of course. So that's for us the most important uh, aspect of everything we, we do with IT systems and, and so on. So we want to interconnect the machines you, know, you see over here. Um, we want to get the machine information, the machine data, but we want to do that because we want to increase the availability of our products. We want to um, increase the productivity and at the end yield, of course. Um, other aspects for that are, of course, also energy and resource efficiency. Um, it's also, of course, an environmental issue. Uh, but nevertheless, at the end, it's also about euros for, for us. So we want to save um, the energy in, in production so that we can save some money uh, over that. So for, for us, and I think that's, that's um, important to, to understand for, for everybody that's uh, working with us on, on these topics, the communication technology is a servant. It's not a driver. So we won't use uh, Li-Fi or 5G or something else um, because we think it is cool. Uh, we will just use it if we think it helps us with, with our issues, with the things we want to do and, and want to increase. What is one way we see for, for the future? So one, one aspect that's coming up or rising in the last five to 10 years more and more is we want to get more data from, from our machines. So at the end, five years ago, we uh, walked through our factories with a lot of paper in our hands. So uh, everything, the orders were on paper, the, um, the, aspect, the news, the status from, from the machine were well, on paper. Um, that's the old view, but it's just five years ago, so it's not so long ago. And now we want to increase the amount of, of sensors, of actors. Well, we want to get all the information possible and needful at the end. And we want to do this because we need some real-time analysis of our production states. We want to see in, in real time, is there an issue? Can we optimize um, the way we produce? Um, also doing some offline analysis, can we learn for the future from, from the last few months of, of production and uh, things like that? <clears throat> What does it mean for communication systems in general and uh, where 
can LiFi uh, take place into that? So um, I have four use cases I, I want to talk a little bit more about. Uh, I will start with an industrial IoT network approach. It uh, concludes three steps. So uh, starting with, with the first step is about uh, a robust and reliable machine connectivity or machine communication here. So what does it mean? So you know, taking, um, if you imagine the, the image of our factory from a few slides ago, um, we have a lot of machines in, in our factories. Um, they are connected at the moment via Ethernet. So classic approach, uh, Ethernet cables are everywhere. And uh, one aspect for us is um, why not use uh, Li-Fi for that? Other aspect could be why not use radio frequency, but for the moment, let's talk about Li-Fi here. And with a Li-Fi, um, gateway with a LIFI aspect uh, on the ceiling, we want to get the, the pressure of uh, some, some parts of, of machines, some images for, for quality aspects, for example, at the end also the machine data and temperature, energy, things like that. And why do we want to do that with light and not um, sticking with ethernet cable as we've done for the few last few years. Um, one very important aspect is um, the faster startup times for, for new machines or the movement of machines. So I've been with Weidmüller now for two and a half years. And one aspect that surprises me most when, when I joined Weidmüller is how often we, we move our machines. That's uh, incredible. So we move our machines inside of one factory hall. So uh, at the moment uh, with COVID-19, I'm, I'm not as usual in our factories as, um, as I've been before. If I'm away for three weeks and then going back to the factory, it will look differently from three weeks ago. Uh, on, on the one hand. And on the other hand, we are also moving the machines um, between our factories. So our main uh, facilities are in Germany and um, central Germany. But for example, we have also huge facilities in, in the Czech Republic and, and Romania. And those machines are moved from Romania back to Germany and then to the Czech Republic and, and so on and so on. And, uh, with that, everything that's mechanic is an issue because we, we have to get it somewhere uh, to the machine and then it's not fitting the new setup because the older machine was a, a small one. Now we have a big one. The cable is at the different position and, and things like that. So it takes time to, to integrate that. And uh, that's one hope we have for such systems that we can use uh, Li-Fi on the ceiling and then the position, the exact position doesn't matter uh, of the machine. We are flexible for that. The other aspect is um, the data transparency. So if we are adding more and more sensors and, and so on and just having one ethernet connection somewhere at the machine, we also have to connect the new sensors wire some, some cables inside of the machine to the place where the Ethernet cable is. And uh, so that's also another aspect, saving some, some time and uh, effort over there. And at the end, of course, we want to integrate more devices. So why Li-Fi? We want to save the efforts of the cable installation and become more and more flexible. Um, and in comparison to Wi-Fi, just to mention one radio technology for, for that. So with Wi-Fi, we do not have the quality of service we need um, for approaches like that. And what's also very interesting is the increased security for, for us. I think we have some technical challenges we, we have to fulfill over there. So how do we connect the IO? 
und T devices of line of sight is not not possible inside of the machine. Um, and one other question, how many luminaires do we actually need uh, for that? So if installation efforts are too expensive, then we will stick with cable. And um, if we are talking about full automation, we would need a latency below one millisecond. So if we really want to do that, then um, that's a hard challenge. Now we have talked about the interconnection from the ceiling to the machine. And let's talk about the backhole communication on the ceiling itself. So at the moment, of course, it's Ethernet, it's fiber or something like that. So uh, it, it's the cable. Um, but as I've mentioned before, we want to be more and more flexible and also um, move machines to an area where uh, at the moment there is nothing, maybe, uh, especially no cable. And um, therefore, it would be interesting for us to, to have this reliable wireless backhole communication here, um, maybe based on life at point to point links, um, maybe point to multi point. Um, I think that's um, part of the research for, for the moment. And here, our aim is the same. So we want to save the cable installation, and uh, but we need our high data rates and the flexibility. So is it really a reliable replacement for Ethernet? That's uh, the question we, we have on that. And um, yeah, is the installation effort so low as we hope for uh, at the moment. And uh, maybe one aspect for that is that at the end, we will have a full meshed architecture uh, in our factory. The third aspect for that is the mobility support. So and that's also um, a trend we, we foresee and, and we actually have in, in, in our factories that we are using uh, smartphones, we are using tablets, we are using the HoloLens, for example, for augmented reality and other devices. So we become more and more um, mobile. Um, AGVs, so uh, ground vehicles are another example for that. So we also want to integrate mobile devices. And maybe one approach could be to combine Li-Fi and 5G over here. So we have two reliable communication technologies, hopefully, Li-Fi and 5G. We can support the mobility and uh, we can also do some offloading at the machines uh, if needed. But for that, of course, we need a vertical handover between these two technologies. Um, I think that will be a challenge. So we have to have an integration of Li-Fi into the 5G core. Uh, and then uh, use both technologies for that. So that's our idea for an industrial IoT network based on optical wireless communication over here. Now I want to introduce um, a slightly different application, um, but that should use the same system. And that's there we are talking about intelligent transport systems. So here you have an image from one of the ITS we are using in, in one of our facilities. Um, as you can see here, the, the back black line on the floor, and that's um, the indicator where um, this vehicle has to go at the moment. And um, what we do not have here is flexibility. So it's, it's a very fixed and static system. Um, it's not so easy to, to adapt it to new supply chain approaches and, and things like that. So what we want to have is uh, we want to increase our productivity by optimizing our supply chains uh, inside of the factory, having more flexibility for ITS, um, for positioning for, for navigation and therefore reduce um, uh, you know, our efforts on, on that. And hopefully with light communication, we can use the same system for the communication and the positioning. That would be, of course, very nice for us because we can reduce the costs for that. 
But what we need is high precision at the end. So we need uh, some, uh, precisioning, uh, positioning above five centimeters. So that are uh, all wishes we have over there. And uh, with these systems, we hopefully are very flexible and can adapt to our changing environments and, and very good manners. So we, then we need the horizontal handover between the different luminaires. Uh, we have to take a look at line of sight and non line of sight conditions we, we have in our factories and see uh, what coverage is provided by, by the, those luminaires. Yeah, with that, I come to my conclusion. Um, I've stated here uh, one sentence for that. All is flexible, even factories. <laughs> so a um, uh, small sentence, but um, it means very much um, because everything you hear, uh, you see here in, in this picture um, might be on, at some, some else position in, in the next week. <laughs> so, and therefore the, the communication systems have to be very flexible and have to adapt for, for that um, because that's the key for the future for, for smart manufacturing. And we see that LiFi can boost that, but there are also a lot of technical challenges that uh, have to be solved on, on the way to that. <laughs>